All right, here we're gonna be asked to find the domain of two functions. And this seems to be one of those topics that really just troubles college algebra students. And I want you to try and understand what's being asked first. What we're saying when we're asked to find the domain is we're saying when you're given a function, you're supposed to be able to plug stuff into it and then it's supposed to be able to spit things out. But some functions we can plug things in and it can't handle what's plugged in. It's kind of like I always try and say, it's like if you look at like a Krispy Kreme donuts and they put all the dough balls in and it goes through the machine, they come out nice, nice uh, high calorie, high fat uh, donuts on the other end. But if you were to sit there and put your you know, shoes into it, right? If you sit there and stick your shoe into the machine, it's not gonna be able to do anything with it, right? It's not gonna come out as a donut on the other side. So we need to be careful with certain things that we plug into functions because they can't handle them. Now let's look at our first function. Um, our first function, the main thing we wanna see here is that we have a fraction and our variable appears in the denominator. And that means that there's a possibility that our denominator could be zero. And we know that in mathematics, you can never divide by zero. So the question is, when you, when you have a fraction, you wanna look at the bottom here, just the bottom, and you wanna take it to the side and you wanna say, okay, x minus three, I know that this cannot be zero. If it equals zero, the function's gonna be bad. So we need to figure out what would make it zero. So what we can do is we can work with this kind of like you would do algebraically we can kind of add three to both sides, and we can say here these cancel, and we say x cannot equal, and then zero plus three is just three. So look at it now. We're saying x cannot be three. Now check it for yourself. If, if you did plug in three here, you get three minus three, that'd be zero, and that's bad. So the domain of this function is everything, you can plug anything you want in except three, all right? Now, on the next example, we have a square root. So that's another red flag for you. When you see a fraction, that's a red flag. When you see a square root or a fourth root or a sixth root or something that's even out here, that's a red flag. And that's because in mathematics, we cannot take the square root of negative numbers unless we involve the imaginary numbers, which we don't wanna do here. So that's not allowed. No negative numbers under the root. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look under this root and we're gonna to say to ourselves, look, Whatever's underneath here, okay, this three minus x, we know that this cannot be negative. Now to not be negative means that you wanna be positive, right? That means it must be greater than zero. Also, it could be equal to zero because if we had zero here, the square root of zero is zero. So what we're saying to ourselves is this under here must be positive or zero, okay? If it's positive or zero, we're okay. So now this is what's called a linear inequality, and we try and solve this. So let me get x by itself. I'll subtract three from both sides. These will go away. I'll have negative x is greater than or equal to negative three, because zero minus three is negative three. Now we wanna get rid of the negative x here. In order to do that, we can multiply both sides by negative one. But there's something to remember with inequalities. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, the inequality will flip over. So I multiply both sides by negative one, which will make this a positive and make that a positive, but it will flip our inequality over. And that's our solution. So what we're saying is that in order for this function to be okay, you must plug in a value of x that is less than or equal to the value of three.